Here is Jimmy Clitheroe as the Clitheroe Kid with Peter Sinclair, Patricia Burke, Danny Ross and Diana Day in... The Best of Birthday Look. Hello, 10 Downing Street here. <laughs> Ted's piano tuner speaking. <laughs> <laughs> That's James, isn't it? That's right. Did you want your piano tuning? No, I want to speak to your mother. Oh, you want your banjo restringing. <laughs> Who's on the phone, Jimmy? It's either Mr Brocklebank or some twit pretending to be him. Give it to me. Uh, hello? Ah, sanity at last. Oh, well, what did you want, Humphrey? I wish to have my banjo restrung. <laughs> <laughs> Banjo restrung? Tell him you're too busy, man, polishing trombones. <laughs> Shut up. Uh, look, I I'm just going out, Humphrey. What did you want? Well, I was just checking in my diary about birthdays. Birthdays? Tell him not to wait till mine, ma'am. And uh, not to bother about the present. I'll just have the money any time. Today. <laughs> Get out of this hall. Go on. But, ma'am... Get up before I hit you. With the umbrella stand. All right, Mama. I'm going. N now then, Humphrey, I'm in a hurry. What's this about birthdays? Well, first of all, Susan's birthday. Susan's birthday? Yes. Well, I was really checking that hers is several weeks away and that is Mr Sinclair's birthday next. That's right. It's next Sunday, as a matter of fact. No. Oh. Good, I'm glad I've got that straight. <laughs> That's the 23rd of September. Susan's birthday. And Mr Sinclair's birthday. Next Sunday. Now, excuse me, Humphrey, I must fly. A cheerio. Bye, Mrs Clitheroe. Oh, just look at the time now. Where did I put my handbag? Um, uh, what the... What are you doing behind this door? Uh, spring cleaning, ma'am. What, at the end of August... I'm, I'm a slow worker. <laughs> I was listening for fluff in the keyhole, uh, looking for it. Uh, the phone's ringing at the front door. Uh, the, there's somebody on the bell. I'm going crackers. Yes, well, on your way. See who's at the door. Yes, ma'am. I'll peep through the letterbox and see who it is. <laughs> now then. Wrinkle grey suit. Taxi badge. Red braces and bother boots. <laughs> Not the vicar. <laughs> oh, it's old Dracula Higginbottom. You've been a long time, haven't you? Oh, sorry, Mr. Bloodsucker. Uh, blood... <laughs> Bloodbottom. Um, Higginbottom. <laughs> Come in and wipe your feet. Thank you very much. I, um, I asked you to wipe your feet. I have wiped my feet. Those weren't your feet. They were your boots. <laughs> yes, and I'll wipe them again on the seat of your pants. Oh, uh, Mr Higginbottom, I'm just going out. I don't blame you with this brat in the house. Oh, Jimmy, behave yourself. Uh, Father's not back from town yet, Mr Higginbottom, but you're welcome to wait for him in the living room. Oh, thanks, missus, but it's the lad I want a word with. Young Dick Turpin here. The little highway robber. <laughs> Look, look, I'm afraid I haven't time to listen, Mr. Higginbottom. If he's been naughty, tell his granddad about it. Now, cheerio. Uh, so long, missus. Uh, Ta-ra, ma'am. You, you, you were right, Susan, that there is somebody here, and, and it's not your man. Oh, hello, Mr. Higginbottom. Are you just going? Yes, round the twist. <laughs> it's like coming in a madhouse here. Who is it, Alfie? Yeah, Mr. Madbottom. <laughs> <laughs> The Higgin house. He's not going, he's coming. But well, he's here. Jimmy's here as well, but that's not surprising. He lives here. It's Mr. Higginbottom who's a stranger. And they don't come any stranger than Mr. Higginbottom. <laughs> Clear that all. Any day now you're going to make history. You'll be the youngest bloke on the national hell to get false teeth. <laughs> What's going on? What do you want, Mr. Higginbottom? Oh, hello, Susan. I've come to ask if you'd like to be an only child. <laughs> I'm afraid I don't think that's very funny. Oh, good old Susan. You sort him out, love. Oh, shut up or I'll smack you. Oh, Grandad's out, Mr Higginbottom. Can I give him a message? Yes. Uh, tell him if I don't get two and sixpence off the lad here now, I'll have it off Pete himself in Best Bitter. Ooh, I, what have you been doing, Jimmy? It's a lie. I was somewhere else. It was two other lads. Your job. 
<laughs> this brat of my Aussie got a job delivering leaflets for a grocery firm for ten bob between them. My Aussie delivered over 500 leaflets on the housing estate and all he got off Clitheroe here was two and six and he hardly delivered any. And our Jimmy kept seven and six for himself? Why not? I plumbed the streets for Aussie to go around so he wouldn't get lost. <laughs> I was the brains of the job. Fat Aussie was just the brawn. And that's a heck of a lot of brawn. I'll hang you on a tree for the blue titch to peck. <laughs> All right, Mr Higginbottom. Jimmy, give him the two and sixpence. You won't! If you don't go halves with Ozzy, I'll tell Grandad and Mother what you've done. Give Mr Higginbottom the money. Oh, heck. All right, you scraggy-looking sister. <laughs> Here you are, Mr Higginbottom. Thank you. I'll see this money go straight where it belongs. In the till at the Rose and Crown. <laughs> I'll see you later. I'll see you out, Mr Higginbottom. Oh, you've had it now with Susan. Did you, did, did, did you think she'll squeal on you? Why shouldn't she squeal? Pigs usually do. Don't, don't call Susan a pig. You mean a sow. Do what I'm a pig. Listen, Alfie, Susan will be nice to me when she finds out I'm buying her a present for her birthday next Sunday. Oh, well, I suppose that would be Susan's birthday. Next Sunday? Yes, I heard my mum tell Mr Brocklebank when I was just in the keyhole. <laughs> now, where could I buy a nice present for my beloved sister? Something nice and useful <laughs> and dirt cheap. <laughs> well, they're, they're, they're all going to that Indian near us for bargains. The, the one who's just owned the general store. Good. You can drop me off there when you go. Get yeah, right, Jimmy. I must think about a present myself. Ooh, I can't quite have found out in town. Fancy me getting Susan's birthday wrong. It's awful. Get away. Could happen to any twit. That's true. I'm not the only bit. You see, I'll clout you in a minute. Man, I, ooh, I, I'm hopeless on dates and cards and things. Ooh, they did laugh that time when I sent me cousin Arnold to get well soon card. Why? Wasn't he ill? No, no. He just got married. <laughs> Mustafa Ben Ali, General Store. <laughs> what does it say here? For attention, please be ringing. Shop! Please be coming before we are taking our customer elsewhere. <laughs> all right, all right, I am coming. I am begging your pardon, little sire, but I am round at the back. <laughs> so I've noticed. <laughs> Have you tried cutting out bread and potatoes? <laughs> You are making a little English joking. When I am saying I am round at the back, you are saying I should diet. <laughs> Why? What colour is it now? <laughs> <laughs> oh, diet! Not diet! <laughs> <laughs> you are making another English joke. You are full of comical tweezers. <laughs> I am very much enjoying welcoming you to my humble harmonium. Now, what can I be doing for you? Well, I want something for my sister. A birthday present. I thought you might be able to suggest something. Well, well, perhaps sometimes... Uh, <clears throat> sometimes I am very suggestive. <laughs> but... But first, we must be finding out her age grouping. Uh, tell me, is she toddler, teenage or adultery? She's a pensioner. <laughs> Pardon? Well, she looks like one in the morning. If she gets on the bus without her makeup, they let her ride for nothing. <laughs> please, please, we are going all round nowhere and not getting to the houses. Now, your sister. Is your sister married, engaged, or unspeakable? <laughs> well, she's got a boyfriend, Alfie Hall. It was him who told me to come here. I think you know him. Oh, yes, I am knowing him indeed. Always talking very much and seeing very little. He's having... He's having the gift of the gabble. That's him. Sometimes he's talking the hind legs of a Bombay elephant. <laughs> now, about my present for Scraggy Annie. What have you got for five bob? Well, no, let me be seeing them. Ah, yes, here we are. Punjabi passion. 
what? Well, it's some powder I'm importing from India. Special powder smell very nice. We British are calling it telecom. <laughs> hey? Oh, talcum powder. Right, there's your five bob. Wrap it up. Very well. But first, is there any note you are wishing to enclose? Any greetings, messages? Oh, oh yes. Uh, may your birthday be happy and jolly enough. This powder works out at a penny a puff. <laughs> went out and bought a birthday present for Susan, did you? Well, you know me, ma'am. <laughs> what a good lad I am. Yes. And it's talcum powder, is it? Punjabi passion. Yes, think something horrible. <laughs> Still, it might not be noticed in the pub with all that smell of beer. No, I think you... Beer? Oh, Susan doesn't go in pubs. It's not Susan's birthday on Sunday. It's your granddad's. Is it, Tech? You told Mr. Brocklebank on the phone it was all Susan's. I heard you when I was... Uh, when I was... Uh, mm -hmm. um, well, you have got rather a loud voice. Yes, <laughs> and you've got rather big ears. If you'd been listening to both sides of the conversation, you'd have got it right. Next Sunday's your granddad's birthday. <laughs> Talcum powder, indeed. <laughs> Ooh, you like that for a present. <laughs> oh, Heck. Well, perhaps I could mix some pepper with it and crack on its scented snuff. <laughs> nah, excuse me, dashing in, Mrs. Clitheroe, but I wanted to show you while Susan was out. You see, anyway, I hadn't much time, and I thought, well, shall I get Susan for a present? And then I remembered my Auntie Polly. She'd make a funny present, wouldn't she? <laughs> oh, she works in a ladies' clothes shop, oh, it was embarrassing. The, the, the window was full of corsets, so before I went in, I put some dark glasses on so I wouldn't be recognised. I went inside, fell over a display case, g g grabbed something to break me fall and finished up on the floor with a nude woman. <laughs> yeah, it, it was a matter wax model, ooh, and all the customers laughed. I've, I've got them in this box. It, it, it's a lady shorty nighty with, with a matching shorty chiffon dressing gown. D do you think they'll be a surprise? More of a shock, I'd say. <laughs> if the window cleaner sees me granddad in that lot, he'll fall off his ladder. <laughs> Shut up, shut up. Look, I was here first and I'll thump anybody who says I wasn't. There you go again, Higginbottom, reverting to the law of the jungle. Why don't you show a little decorum? Please, he's showing nothing in here. This is a respectable... <laughs> Oh, hey, is Mr. Higginbottom in a temper, Jimmy? Well, so would you be if somebody heard you in a shop buying a hairnet. <laughs> it's for the wife. Really? I didn't know you were married to Ina Sharples. <laughs> Does Mrs Higginbottom know? Look, you're asking for a belt round the lug hole. Well, you will not be getting it in this shop. Not one belt have I got in the place. <laughs> no, 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 sir, no, no. The gentleman, uh, Mr Higginbottom, was speaking in the vernacular. But I do not have a vernacular. <laughs> I'm having to use the one next door. <laughs> Jimmy, Jimmy, I, I, I don't like this. Hey, let's swap the talcum powder for the tobacco and get out of here. Please, little Saib. First you buy the talcum powder. Now you are not wanting the talcum powder. What is wrong with the talcum powder? Nothing, but I want some tobacco instead. Oh, your sister is now smoking a pipe. <laughs> no, 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 no. You don't understand. It's his granddad's birthday on Sunday, not, not Susan, so Jimmy wants to change it. N not his granddad's birthday, I mean, you can't change that, his granddad's been certified. <laughs> <laughs> we, we want to change this talcum powder for this special tobacco, th but that's seven and six, and, and the powder was five, Bob. So I've, I've said that just this once, I'll give it to Jimmy. The, the difference in the money, and we'll hurry up, because I've, I've, I've got to get rid of it, my frilly shirt, nighty, and my chiffon dressing dress. <laughs> Please. Please, mo most baffled I am becoming. <laughs> Mr. Hall, why are you saying you must get rid of frilly nighty? He wants to swap him before the winter. <laughs> Sorry.
sorry I'm late. Oh, the shops were full. I'll soon have the lunch ready. Some nice pork chops. Oh, I could just eat a pork chop. I'm not hungry, Pat. Oh, in fact, I think I could eat two pork chops. <laughs> Don't you be so greedy. L- look, how about an omelette and some of these strawberries, eh? Yes, ma'am, but can I have the pork chops first? <laughs> I'm talking to your granddad. Oh, look, Pat, I'll just have a cup of tea, that's all. Father... When are you going to go and see that doctor? Well, I've been to see him this morning. That's what's made me feel so miserable. Oh, well, you'll be happier on Sunday, Grandad, when you get all your presents, especially mine. Uh, Father, what did the doctor say? Well, he says it's a touch of bronchitis again. And I'm not going to get rid of it until I give up smoking. So I have. (laughs) You what? I've had my last pipe full of tobacco. Hey, Jimmy, I've, I've just had a thought. If your granddad's given up smoking, that present you bought him won't be... Alfie, stop thinking and start counting. Your money. You are? We are going the back to the Indian reservation. <laughs> Two times once more again. <laughs> Let us all be speaking together, one at a time. (laughs) I am not understanding your sister. She is not wanting telecom powder. She is wanting tobacco. Then she is giving up her pipe and wanting something else but not men's slippers because he is buying her those. No, you get it mixed up. No, she's not his sister. She's his granddad. Bibber Susan, I mean, isn't. He's her sister. Not his granddad, she is. And he's given up smoking. No, not him, he's too young. It's granddad, so he wants to change it. No, not, not change his granddad, his present. Well, that's cleared it up, hasn't it, mister? <laughs> cleared what up? What Alfie said. My granddad's sister has given up smoking slippers. <laughs> Look, will you shut up? You're confusing the gentleman. Please, this is more than skin and bone can stand. I am not caring which man is this boy's sister. I am taking back the tobacco and I am giving you something else for her. Well, uh, what do you suggest? Well, I'm not knowing. I am senseless. This kind of girl might be wanting anything from perfume to a neurotic drill. Hey, Jimmy, I remember now. She wants cufflinks. I mean, your granddad does, because he's always losing them. Alfie, you're right. Mr. Mustafa, my friend is finding one of his marbles. <laughs> we'll have some cufflinks. How much are they? Oh, yes, yes. These are very fine cuffing links. Genuine gold, silver-plated plastic enamel. <laughs> Ten bobs. So if you are giving me back the tobacco, I am giving you the cuffing links for two shillings and six old pennies or 23 pennies decimated. <laughs> Wrap him up. Alfie, give him two and six. You what? There's no need to worry about it. You'll get it back the week after you get the other two and six. Well, when do I get the first two and six? Ah, that's the one you've got to worry about. <laughs> do you think Grandad will like them, Mother? Oh, they're beautiful, Susan. He'll be very pleased. Well, they were the nicest ones in the shop. Hey, Mum, wait till you see what I've bought me, Grandad. They're smashing out the Alfie. Oh, ah, lovely. Do you mind not interrupting? Well, I just want to show you the present I bought me, Grandad. Well, I happen to be showing Mother the present I've bought, Grandad. Well, I bet it's not as good as mine. <laughs> I think you might lose your bet. Look at them. Beautiful set of matching typing, studs and cufflinks. Yes, well, I've bought him a pair of... You what? <laughs> of all the rotten, scraggy sisters. What did you want to buy him cufflinks for? Oh, because he needs them. Alfie reminded me yesterday. He said he's always losing them. That's right. I remember now. I thought I'd said that before. <laughs> you mean you told her to buy cufflinks and then you told me to buy cufflinks, you great big dozy. Come on, I'm going to swap this for two presents. Something for me grandad and an Indian rope for you. You can climb up it and disappear. <laughs> Was that the post? 
announcement, Father. Ah, it's a present for me from Angus and Flora. He oh. sent it all the way from Glasgow. And paid the postage as well. <laughs> now, that's a bit unkind, Grandad. Oh, well, I, I was only joking. They, they've really splashed out this time. Why, what is it? It's a beautiful hand-woven tartan scarf. Cost three pound fifteen shillings. Oh, how do you know that? Well, Angus has left a price tag on. <laughs> he wouldn't want to spend all that without me knowing. Oh, no, I probably never noticed it. Oh, it certainly is lovely and soft. Oh, it's beautiful. Oh, well, I, I, think, I think I'll go upstairs and put it in my drawer. Ah, it's a lovely present right enough. Oh, Grandad seems a lot more cheerful today. Yes, he always does when it's near his birthday. He pretends not to care about it, but he's like a big kid, really. <laughs> Come in, Alfie. All is forgiven. We're friends again. You can have a cup of tea for nothing. Oh, thanks very much. Well, after all, it's not everybody who'll give five bob towards your granddad's present. I've lent you five bob, like, like the other five bob. That makes ten. That's very good, Alfie. Five and five is ten. Now try a hard one. Six and six. Alfie, you haven't been lending him more money. Why not? It was his fault over the cufflinks. And I was the one who had to ask Mustafa to change it again. Oh, no, no, dear, no, no. Don't some English mothers be having them. <laughs> there were tears running down his chota peg. <laughs> Well, how much have you paid for the present? Fifteen bob. How Ooh. about that, Scraggy Annie? And it's better than any rotten cufflinks. <laughs> what have you bought him? A tartan scarf. <laughs> <laughs> well, James, it really has been a chapter of accidents for you, hasn't it? <laughs> Not to mention the poor Indian gentleman. I don't suppose he knew whether he was coming or going. Well, the last time I came, he went. I walked into the shop and he ran into the back crying. <laughs> oh, dear, not again, not again. England may be my mother country, but I am going to emigrate to the land of my father's, Ireland. <laughs> <laughs> James, <laughs> you're pulling my leg. <laughs> anyway, you managed to change the scarf. Oh, yes, I've got the present he should have. And I don't care if somebody's given him the same thing this time. He'll still like it. Uh, come on, Mr. Higginbottom. Father, everything's ready for your little party. Ah, oh, it looks a very nice spread, missus. Ah, oh, you've done me proud, Pat. These cakes look delicious. They are. You what? Um, uh, one fell off the tray when I was carrying them in, ma'am. <laughs> you always say you shouldn't put them back on the plate. Yes, and I also say you shouldn't eat things that fall on the floor. Well, I didn't. As luck would have it, it fell into my hand. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, James, you are a little rascal. <laughs> you mean a little piglet. <laughs> it should be eating from a trough. We haven't got one, Mr Higginbottom. Can we borrow yours? <laughs> oh, now, look. Let's have no trouble. This is my birthday party. Mr Higginbottom knows that. That's why he's wearing a shirt. I mean, a, a clean one. Jimmy, will you behave or you'll spend the birthday party upstairs crying? I'm sorry, ma'am. Right, let's get started. Pass the cream crakes, Mr Brocklebank. Uh, not yet, James. We haven't wished your grandfather a happy birthday. All right. Happy birthday, Grandad. Pass the cream cakes, Brocklebank. <laughs> We're waiting for Susan and Alfie before we start. Yes, and then we're giving the presents. Have you bought one, Mr Higginbottom? Of course I have. It's not every day you're 21, is it, Pete? <laughs> that was very funny, Mr Higginbottom. When everybody stop laughing, will you tell us another joke? No, but I'll show you a party trick. You hide up the chimney and I light the fire. I'll take the parcels, Alfie. You just hang your coat up. Here I am, Susan. Bye bye oh. oh dear, what's happened? Alfie's hanging his coat up on the mat. <laughs> Don't forget to wipe your feet on the hole stand. Oh, now, Jimmy, stop trying to be funny. Come on, Alfie. Sorry, we're late, Mother, but it was Alfie's bike again. Why, what happened? I bumped into the horse stand. 
On your motorbike? Yes. No, I was hanging it up. No, not my bag. It's outside. My coat. No, not my coat's outside. My bike. I, I, I was carrying it in. When, I was carrying it when I came in. To save petrol. That's right. No, no, stop it. I know what you're trying to do. I'm not a fool, you know. Well, I do a fair impression of one. <laughs> That's not very kind, Mr. Higginbottom. Oh, shut your face. Oh, charming! <laughs> Please! Can we all shut our face? Uh, <laughs> can we all behave? This is Father's birthday. Yes. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Brenda. Happy birthday to you. Now can I have my cream cake? <laughs> After we've given him the present. There's my father. Happy birthday. And that's from me, Grandad. Ah, there is my present, Mr. Sinclair. Well, aren't you going to kiss him? <laughs> oh, sorry. Happy birthday, Mr. Get off! <laughs> but, 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 so, sorry, Mr. Sinclair. Shut up, Jimmy. This is with my very best wishes, Mr. Sinclair. Many happy returns. Well, thank you, Humphrey. And here's my Pete. Just a bit of tobacco wishing you all the best. Well, you might as well take that home, Mr Higginbottom. Me granddad doesn't smoke. Oh, yes, I do. I did try to give it up, but I'm afraid it only lasted a day. You mean I've been in and out of that Indian bu- bazaar <laughs> till I went dizzy? I could have given you tobacco all the time. Well, I'm sorry, son. I, I didn't know you wanted to buy me tobacco. Oh, well, you like my present better than Mr Higginbottom's. You're a cheeky young... Uh, Jimmy, give Grandad your present, then. Uh, it's in the fridge. I'll get it. In the fridge? What is it, then? Four bottles of your favourite beer. <laughs> Don't tell me the Indian sells beer as well as tartan scarves. <laughs> oh, no, he didn't change it for me. His wife did. While he was sitting in the back with his head in his hands. <laughs> She went to the off-licence and brought me four bottles of beer and five bob for myself. She gave you five bob? How did that happen? Well, it is a long story. Are you sitting comfortably on your bed of nails? <laughs> then I begin. First, I am buying the telecom powder for my granddad Susan, who is not smoking the pipes, but so I am changing the tobacco for the coffee links for my sister granddad. And he... <laughs> Those involved with the Clitheroe Kid this week were Peter Sinclair as grandfather, Patricia Burke as mother, Danny Ross as Alfie Hall, Diana Day as Susan, Tony Melody as Mr Higginbottom, Brian Truman as the Indian, and Colin Edwin as Humphrey Brocklebank. The recorded programme was written by James Casey and Frank Roscoe, produced by James Casey, and starred Jimmy Clitheroe as the Kid himself. you're all thinking that I cheated that I got me granddad's present and finished up with five bob I started with well you're wrong I finished up with six bob I got a shilling back with the four empty beer bottles <laughs> but still as me granddad says it's not the present that matters it's the thought that counts ta <laughs>